Welcome to Fantastic Fiber Friday. Not the 13th. I'm just kidding, but yeah, Friday the 13th, that was kind of fun. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say the fiber of the week had a funny name. It's a Canadian fiber, it's a Canadian sheep called Utawe. And it's spelled really funny, but it is said Utawe Arcot. And it's one of the three Arcot breeds, and it's one I was able to get my sticky little fingers on. And it made, it dyed beautifully and made some lovely, lovely top. I absolutely love this. I enjoyed spinning it, the little bit that I did get a chance to spin so far. And it is just as floofy as it looks. Um, it has wonderful crimp. It will make a great springy yarn. I would say it's medium soft. It's got a slight prickle. Um, just absolute fun to spin. And here is some of my spun Utawe. I just grabbed a little bit and spun it up with a spindle. And I love the yarn that it makes. It makes a very nice yarn. So if you want to learn more about the Utawe Arcot Sheep and Fiber, you can check on Monday and Wednesday's blog. I did actually get some more spinning done. Not a whole lot. I've been um, working into a new schedule, so I'm a little bit weirded out right now trying to get everything together. But it's coming along. I did some more of the Erin Colorway. I've got almost two bobbins full now. I think I'm just going to keep this as a two-ply. I think it would be look really nice as a two-ply. And probably by next week, this braid here behind me that you see will be gone too, because that's another um, Aran braid. I had two of them. So that one will probably be gone, and I'll have to replace that with something else to sit there behind me for decoration. Um, I promised a tutorial on row counters this week, and so I've got before me about four different types. And you have the clicker one that you carry along with your knitting and you click, click, click to count your rows and it goes up, goes from zero to 99. And this is one of the first ones that I got and it works really well, but if you need more than one counter for something or you misplace it and you haven't written down where you are at or what row you are on, you're kind of SOL. So I do like this. I do wish it had a way to attach itself to knitting somehow. And then you have these little um, tube ones that slide right over your knitting needles. And this is a larger size one. They have them in small sizes and large sizes. And that will fit over a pretty good size knit knitting needle. Here, I've got a knitting needle here. Let's see. The largest size I have is an 11 in these. And let's see, did it slide right over? No. It's supposed to be made for larger knitting needles, well, yeah, well, there it goes. It'll slide right over your needles, just like that. And you just turn it to change your rows. When you move up a row, you turn it up one. And it also goes from 0 to 99. Now, here's another one with the, kind of on the same bent, but it's got a little hanger. And you slide it over your needle and it dangles like that. And once again, you just turn the dial and up your numbers go. Now, some of the ones we have in the store, the, the bracelet row counters, and I think I'm going to use this pink and orangey yellow one to kind of show you how to use these. I like these because it's easier to count rows and repeats at the same time if need be. You can, well, I guess this isn't a very good example, but let me grab a different one. Sometimes we use smaller beads to count from, from one to nine. Yeah, this one will work. And it's pink and brown. I kind of like the, the brown fossil with the pink. Um, if you can see where the bottom row of them, they're either a different color like as in the orange and brown here, or the pink and orange, um, or, or they do one row um, smaller and 
beads with, gosh, I wish I could speak, smaller beads and a different color. Okay, so basically what you do with these, you see this little loop here in the middle? You slide your beads through that and say, I've got, let's just do row counting for now, and then I'll show you how to do the repeats with this. But say you're working on row, you have to do like 20 rows. And so you, you do one row and you slide a bead through. Second, same, finish the second row, on and on and on. Until you get to nine. And so I see I have all, whoops, I'm going to sell through. I got all nine beads through. Then what you do is for the 10th row, you slide all of these little ones back, all of one side back. Let me get them slid. It's much easier to do on your wrist, actually, than it is to... And then you pull a big bead through for the 10th row. And then you start counting with the small beads again, one through nine. And once you get them all through again, you slide them back through and then pull out another big bead. And there's your 20 rows. I hope you got to see that. I think my fingers were in the way. Another nice thing about this, though, is if you have to count rows, like you have a seven row repeat, you have to do five times. It's very easy to count up to seven and slide a big one through for one repeat. So say, okay, I do seven. One, two, three, four. Slide through. Five, six, seven. Ah, uh, there we go. I uh, get six and seven through there. Come on. Six, seven. And then you could pull a bead from the other line through to match your. There's one repeat. And slide the other ones back through, just like you would for rows, but you can count repeats this way too. You can keep track of your rows and repeats at the same time with this, which is can be very handy when you're working um, some patterns and lace and whatnot. I love these. They're beautiful. I, I wear one every day pretty much. Um, the only reason I took mine off today, in fact the one I was wearing I took off today, is because I had to make bread and do dishes and stuff like that. And, but these are pretty hardy. They can go through the shower. I've slept in them. Um, Wendy and I have been working to make the best possible product as well as make it beautiful at the same time. I love these. And they look like a nice piece of jewelry as well as a, a nice way to count things, almost like an old-fashioned abacus in a way. So there is your tutorial on row counters. On to the knitting. I haven't got a whole lot of knitting done. This is the extent of the knitting I got done this week. It was car knitting, so I did washcloths. I need washcloths, so I figured... Why not just throw some cotton in the bag and go? So, plain old garter stitch washcloth. I think I got two of these done. And, you know, little household things. You don't always have to make something super, super fancy. Now, I am going to just warn everybody ahead of time on Monday we are starting a new contest and I hope you will check out Monday's blog to check out the contest and it's a big secret so mom's the word I do have some new things I want to show you that I'm getting ready to put in the store remember when I talked about log bats a few weeks ago well I started making up some blog bats we don't have them all labeled yet and what I'm doing is I'm taking fibers that I've used that I've talked about in the blog, plus um, some of the um, rescued animal fiber from the farm here, and also I have also incorporated some recycled silk into them as well. That means my bread is ready to go in the oven. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so I've started making some different ones, just they'll have the fibers in the description 
in the Etsy shop, of course, you know, so you know what fibers you'll be playing with. And I've been having a lot of fun making these up. And I guess it's a good way when I get, sometimes I get four ounces at a time of one fiber, and I may only do up an ounce of it, if that, to, to actually, you know, play with it and whatnot. And there's some that I really like to keep, but I noticed I was getting a lot of fiber. This one I've actually put some of the um, recycled silk into. I think it's beautiful. And since they're already dyed up, it's just a matter of dividing it out and putting it into, into these bats. So, they, the bats will say either rescued or recycled on them, or R&R. &R. And you can read through. And this one actually has Shetland, Coradale, Coopworth, and Angora in it. So I'll have written down everything that's in them. For those of you with allergies who have problems with Angora or mohair or anything that like that. That is all I have for this week. I guess I better go take care of my bread. You have a great week, and I'll see you next Friday.